Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you've reached my FosTube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is my 78th FosTube video, and it is Sunday, January 17th. Excuse me for kind of looking over here. I have my notes kind of different than I used to. I used to have them over here, but I am actually using my uh, cross stitch stand to kind of hold the notebook. So, um, seems to be working out okay. <laughs> so, I just want to say a big welcome to all of you. <clears throat> if this is your first time finding my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope that you like what you see and want to hit subscribe and thumbs up and all that stuff. And um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and uh, supporting me every week and giving me all the love. It's just a wonderful thing. Um, I want to give a big, huge thank you shout out to uh, Jennifer Stitching Daisy for buying me some coffee this week. Um, if you uh, haven't been here before, I do have a link down below for um, the Buy Me A Coffee app, which is just um, a completely voluntary um, way that you can just go on and, and give a little bit of uh, monetary support. Thanks, however you want to call it. Um, it's completely not necessary, but totally appreciated. And um, this week, uh, Stitch and Daisy gave me a little bit of uh, stitchy love. And um, she, I know, is, is a neighbor of mine. She lives actually in Anaheim somewhere. <laughs> um, was a, we communicated a little bit through uh, instant message and stuff. And I know she lives close to me, but we've never met. Um, so first it was just stuff got in the way and then the world kind of went crazy. So hopefully, uh, I agree, hopefully soon we'll get to meet in real life, um, you know, when all this COVID stuff is over. Um, maybe World Cross Stitch Day 2021, which is Friday, August 13th this year. It's always right by my birthday. Um, so I always feel like I should be doing something to celebrate it and I haven't yet. So maybe that's when we should have a get together. Um, Stitch and Daisy, me, anybody else in the area, we should get together on Friday, uh, August 13th and have a glass of champagne or something. Um, anyway, so thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, let's see. Little life news here. Uh, Southern California has been crazy weather-wise this past week. Um, Friday, it was 91 degrees here on the 15th of January, 91 degrees crazy. I mean, I had to put my air conditioning on to get to sleep that night. It's just nuts. And then now today, I mean, it's supposed to be warm-ish today, I think in the high 70s or something, but then it's going to like, by the end of the week, it's going to be back down to the low, low 60s and raining. So I don't know what's going on with the weather and no wonder everybody around me and me included we all have sinus headaches and we all have like achy joints and stuff because the weather's going nuts and our bodies don't know how to deal with it um but anyway yeah 91 degrees and i'm all like in sweater weather and you know and it's still for whatever reason it's like cold inside because you know it's still cold at night so the inside of like apartments and houses and whatever don't warm up the way they do like during the summer so, you know, I'm sitting there wearing, wearing a sweater all day at work and my feet are cold and then I go outside and it's like, oh, it's hot. It's crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's Southern California weather right now. Um, COVID news regarding my mom. So I kind of have like good news, bad news. Um, so my mom got her first COVID shot. My mom lives in a nursing home in Fullerton, which is uh, like... 10 minutes if that from me um, and I haven't seen her since March um, you know I talked to her on the phone uh, not every day but you know a good <laughs> a good amount of time um, my mom's 79 she's gonna be 80 this year um, it's hard on her she's a very social person it's hard for her not to get to see me not to get to see my brother and his kids um, we tried to do like a zoom thing uh, one time um, where she lives with you know facilitated that she just didn't get it um, with the technology sometimes she's great and sometimes she just doesn't get it and she just she wasn't understanding like she kept 
She's focused on looking at herself, and she wasn't ex much <laughs> noticing that she could see. I mean, she saw all of us, and she said hi to all of us, but it wasn't like a great, meaningful Zoom call because she just wasn't getting it. And at one point, she hung up on us, and we had to get back on. It, it was just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a solution to the problem with my mom. Excuse me while I take a sip. I don't normally keep tea or coffee or whatever. Um, on my desk during my videos, but I realized the last couple weeks I sound really uh, like gravelly during my video, and it's because I'm having aller you know morning allergy um, throat. So um, I have a bunch of David's tea that I bought because I was totally enabled during all of the uh, Flossmas um, tea advent unboxings. Um, and David's tea was the one that I ended up getting, and I got this like totally awesome mug which is it's like double walled and it f it's filled with loose glitter which you know how could I love that more so <clears throat> I brewed myself some tea this morning um, one of the caffeine ones that I haven't been able to uh, make at night and um, oh my god when it was brewing it smelled my my whole apartment was smelling like chocolate nutty <coughs> coconut goodness because that's what it is um, okay, so where was I? Oh, my mom. So, anyway, uh, my mom is in a nursing home. She got her first COVID test, uh, not COVID test, COVID uh, shot, vaccine, last Wednesday, which was great. I found that out, aside from my mom telling me, but I found it out because the facility called me because they are obligated to do a, um, a notification <laughs> that they have had an outbreak of COVID. So they have like 17 patients that have COVID there and they have assured me that those people are being um, kept in a separate wing or separate area that is like got a barrier and you know, um, like sheet barriers and you know that different staff are, are taking care of those people, different supplies are being used for those people, et cetera. But, you know, I mean, I've been so happy for this whole, you know, past eight, nine months that, you know, that where she lives has not had any uh, COVID instances. And then right at the end, when the vaccine's in sight, all of a sudden they have an outbreak. So, you know, it's worrying. Um, it's scary. My mom, I was at my brother's yesterday and we called my mom while we were there, while I was there. Excuse me. And, um, um, and we were talking and she was like, she said she was wa walking on, my mom uses a wheelchair, but she'll like walk her feet. So she says she goes on a walk and she's kind of going on a roll, but she is walking. Um, and she said, there's a big barrier by the nurse's station. And both my brother and I are like, stay away from there. Go back to your room. Don't go near that area. Um, she's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> but um, anyway, so, you know, bad news. Yes, there's an outbreak there. Hopefully they will keep it under control. Good news is she did get her first vaccine, so I guess she gets the second one in three weeks, um, and hopefully then she's protected. I'm just, I'm so worried about my mom because, um, my mom is not the healthiest person, and she is almost 80, and I'm just afraid that if that if COVID gets a hold of her, then then it will be bad because I don't know that her body has the resources to fight it off. She's had chronic bladder infections for like the last, I don't know, five, ten years and has ended up in the hospital several times because when it gets in her, it gets bad really fast. So um, she's never had any like respiratory stuff, but she does have like a heart murmur and she has all these other little things that just scare me that she, if she did get COVID, that it would be bad. Um, but I'm trying to... I'm trying to keep positive about it and trust that the healthcare professionals are good where she lives and that they will keep it controlled and not hopefully let it get onto you know into any of the healthy population. So that's that situation. If anything changes, I'm sure I will let you guys know. Um, so uh, back to like stitchy stuff. Last week I talked about. Um, going on to Michelle Bendy Stitchy's D-Stash 
after my video. Um, there's another one today, another one next week, and I know by the time this goes up, because my YouTube videos have been taking forever to upload, like I'll finish them at 9 in the morning and they get uploaded at like 3 in the afternoon, um, and they're uploading that whole time. So I know you're not going to be able to see this before her dish dash today is over, but I'm just telling you in case you're interested in doing it next week. It was really nice the way she did it. She did not do the kind of de-stash that, you know, has happened in the past where it's like she shows something and everybody has to type it in and the first person gets it. Um, I would never, ever, ever have the chance to get anything that way because my internet just doesn't connect. In fact, when I'm watching a live video that I want to comment on, I have to watch it on my TV and have it open on my computer so that I can use the computer for the, the, um, uh, the chat part but the TV for the actual video because the computer is like so far behind. Um, but anyway, she, she did it differently where she would show the item and give a keyword, you know, like let's say she was showing a, a chart with a cat and the keyword would be cat. And, you know, and then she'd wait a few minutes and we'd chat about whatever, you know, which is just fun to like kind of talk with stitchy people. And, um, you know, and then she'd be like, okay, has everyone put their word in that wants the chart? And okay, there's 50 people who said cat. And then she has a program and it would just randomly pick. So everybody had a shot at every item that they would want. Um, and again, this is a de-stash, so it's, you know, you're purchasing it. It's not you're winning it, but you're winning the lottery to be able to buy it kind of thing. Um, I did win one chart. Um, so um, I'm excited for that. And then she said that she's going to... Like, she's not going to invoice until the very end of all four of them, and then you'll get an invoice to pay. So, I'm going to do that again today, because even though, to be honest, there wasn't a ton of stuff that I was like, oh yeah, I really want that. Last week, it was so fun to be on. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that again today. And by the time you see this video, it'll probably be over, but then I'll do it again next week, too. So, okay, I think that's enough for the, the uh, life portion of my video. We'll get into the stitching. Um, I'm still really, really enjoying um, the method that I've chosen for 2021, and I think I think it is a method that I'm going to enjoy using for the whole year. Where I have picked a focus theme for each month. For this month, it's my friends and family pieces, and then um, I'm picking four to six um, charts that I that are current whips that fit into that theme and then I put them on a small decision wheel along with some free whip spaces and um, I'm spending every morning to find out what I'm going to stitch on that night and um, yeah I'm enjoying it. it. It's giving me stuff to look forward to. I enjoy spinning it in the morning and so far I haven't hit one where I'm like Ugh, I don't want to work on that. So so I'm liking it and I think it's not going to be hard to keep going on that at all. Um, so, and I, I'm enjoying thinking of what themes I want to do each month, and the whole thing is just working out really well for me. Um, okay, so what did I work on last week? Um, I did do a little bit more on my diamond painting. Um, not a ton. I think I did it while I was on a phone call or something. Um, so, I just wanted to... bring that up because I sometimes forget to show you when I work on the diamond painting. Um, I, I've mentioned before, a couple times now, that um, I got my sister-in-law into diamond painting and I couldn't be more thrilled that um, she's all into it now. Um, when I was over there yesterday, she spent a little time working on it. She's making one for my brother. This is her project right now. And I mean, she said she's been doing the diamond painting like every day and she said she's enjoying it so much it's hard, you know, she has to put away obviously when it's time for her to put pets into bed and, but she's just enjoying that hour or so that she gets to work on her diamond painting every night so much. And I have to say that um, this week, especially, I found, you know, with Stacy and the diamond painting and then um, when I was over there yesterday, she did message me and she's like, can you show me how to do cross stitch? So I should do that little tiny Mario that's for Hudson. 
Um, I brought that over and actually she's the one who's doing that. So I showed her how to get started and, um, and she caught on, you know, super quick. I mean, we all know cross stitching isn't hard. It's just, you know, you fall down the rabbit hole and there's a lot to it, but that first basic, like, how do you cross stitch? It's like, you come up here, you go down there, you come up here, you go down there, make sure you're crossing your, you have your legs going the same way all the time. And that's basically it. Um, and she was enjoying it. And then I also, I brought over a needle point, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and she's like, can I try that too? And, uh, when I got home last night, she had sent me an email, you know, saying, here, I picked this pillow. Do you think that would be a good first project? So, um, I think she's, she's going to maybe be a little bit of a stitcher as well. Um, they have a big trip coming up at the end of this year. If COVID wise, everything's okay. Um, the, and the kids are going to go to Israel for the, the two older kids, um, are both going to be, uh, B'nai Mitzvah age and they're not really the kind of kids that would want to get up in a temple in front of a bunch of people and do, uh, the bar, bar and bat mitzvah, but it is really important to them to have the experience of being B'nai, B'nai Mitzvah. So, um, they're actually going to do it in Israel privately, um, at the wall which is really great. And so all you need is a minion, which is 10 adults, um, 10 Jewish adults. So with their parents and the rabbi and Stacy has some friends in Israel and the rabbi has a couple people that he can bring. They can have a really meaningful, um, the name is Fa without, uh, having to have the stress and the, the negative things for them of having that kind of ceremony. So, um, they have this big trip which involves like a 14 hour plane ride. So I think Stacy's thinking ahead that she wants something that she could be able to do on the plane, um, you know, in the hotel, some kind of crafty thing that she can keep her mind and her uh, hands occupied that's portable. And diamond painting isn't that portable. So um, I think that's why she's looking at maybe starting stitching. So I couldn't be happier, honestly. It's just, it's such a thrill to find out that you have uh, encourage somebody to take up any kind of craft really um, that and then my friend Tracy started knitting again I know I mentioned that and she's enjoying that um, in fact I directed her to floss tubers who knit um, so she could watch some tutorials and um, and then one of my subscribers sent me an email saying that the chart that I showed that I said oh it's there in the two dollar patterns on 1884 stitchery and maybe one of you guys got it. She messaged me. She's like, yep, I did. And I don't know. It just was like so exciting to me that I encouraged somebody to go and get something. So yeah, I'm just really enjoying that whole um, being an enabler, a facilitator, or an encourager, whatever word you want to use. I am happy to um, spread a little crafty sunshine into the world. Um, you know, it's, it's a tiny little thing I can do to make my world better and the world of the people that I love. But tikkun olam, it's a little thing, but I think it's an important thing too. So, um, my brother at one point said yes, that I'm, you know, with my flash tube channel, I'm improving the world one stitch at a time. And um, that, I like to think that that's happening. Okay, so I just talked a bunch more and still haven't showed you anything. <laughs> okay, so what did I work on last week? Um, let me show you the two things I just did a, a teeny bit on. Um, I did a teeny bit on uh, Violet Nose Gay, which is a counter canvas piece by uh, from Nancy's Needle. You know, the difference from last time you saw it is I've started on the green on the oops, the next layer kind of of green. But the colors in this are just so gorgeous. Um, and I like purple, as you guys know. Um, so I did just a teeny bit on that last week, and then I did a teeny bit on... Um, 
Lavender roses. Oh, come on, I pulled this out. By Kay Hawks. This is my first Hay Quick Stitch. Again, I think I really just put in like another 30 or so stitches down here. Um, but you know, every stitch gets you closer to the end, so. He's so pretty. So pretty. Um, okay, so those were just like the little ones. And then um, I worked on the chickadees, or actually it's called First Encounter Number 8, crossed, crossed wing collection. And I just threw my flosses on the ground. So, last week I had showed you that I had finished um, this, which actually... I was missing one little row in that leaf, so I caught that, um, but then I um, brought the branch over and started on, um, that's the bottom, or the, the tummy of the bird. Um, <laughs> I realized this week, I don't, and I've said this before, I don't have a single project that doesn't have a mistake in it somewhere. So when I pulled this branch over, I think right where this split is right there, I got a half stitch over too far um, and I didn't realize it until I was done there's no freaking way I'm gonna pull that all out I will make it work it won't matter so there either will be like a little half state half stitch space somewhere or there will be a half stitch bigger stitch somewhere um, it's not gonna affect the bird it's in the branch so um, it's not gonna be a problem I'll make it work as I said last week, I'm a fudger, not necessarily a frogger, but yeah, it's like, I have mistakes everywhere, and I don't super care. Oh, I promised Hudson I would show this on my channel, um, and he, full disclosure, he didn't draw this, he only colored it, he told me that, and I have to say that, um, but he colored me an elephant. And I told him I would put it in a frame and put it back on my wall so you should see it there next week if I, um, <laughs> if I get my button gear and do that. If not, it will be up there eventually. But this was colored by Hudson Abrams. And he's a very, very talented artist. Um, actually, what he needs to do is draw me an elephant instead of coloring me an elephant so I can put that on my wall. Because as I said, he's very, very good at drawing and um, very talented. Uh, very opinionated, too, I have to say. He was actually a little bit annoyed with me because um, when I put together my uh, vlog of our vacation, um, if you watched it, there were several clips of him because he enjoys being on camera. And so there were uh, several times that he uh, gave his opinions on the snow and, you know, did all kinds of stuff with me um, that day. But, you know, I had to edit the video. And there was one clip that I edited out the part where he said to like and subscribe to Auntie Carla's channel. And he was really annoyed that I edited that out and I didn't have that part of him saying like and subscribe. So, I'm sure that Stacy's watching and he's probably hanging around because uh, they do that. <laughs> um, so, if you're watching Hudson... I'm telling all the people that you say that they should like and subscribe to your Auntie Carla's channel. So, um, okay. So as I said yesterday when I went over to their house, I brought a uh, needlepoint. And yes, I brought out this project, pack, uh, project that I have not worked on in over a year because I was mad at it. I, I said before I didn't like the white. I think that they were really skimpy on the amount of white that they gave and the white is a thinner yarn. Um, this is, oh, where's the picture? Uh, it's called Watercolor 
watercolor floral. And um, anyway, so I basically put it aside and haven't stitched on it because I just didn't know what to do about that. Um, when I did my whip parade and I talked about it, I thought, well, I'll just get some white and um, use that. So I did. I got a big thing of Red Heart white, and it turns out this is too thick. Um, but what I decided to do is go ahead and continue working on it, use the white that's in the kit, and do it continental stitch instead of tent stitch because that gives better coverage and helps a little bit with the skimpy look. Um, and then if I run out, then I know I need to get a thinner weight than that. I think I need to get like a baby weight or something. But I'm going to just not worry about it and I'll just do the white with continental stitch and see what happens. So I just worked on it a little bit yesterday. Um, I You can kind of see actually how... At least I can. This little bit right here is continental stitch and it looks thicker and fuller than this bit right here which is tent stitch. And it's the same yarn, it's just continental stitch makes it look a lot fuller. And uh, I, you know, I don't like it with the tent stitch but that's what the instructions say to do because, because they're being cheap. You know, Intense Stitch uses less yarn. Continental Stitch gives better coverage. Um, yeah. So, anyway. I decided to pull this out, work on it. Anyway, um, it only has this corner basically done so far, and then I went across the top. But, um, it's going to be in my rotation now. I'm, in February, I'm going to have, like, a floral theme. And I'm going to put this on the, um, Decisions Bill for two days. So I'm going to put this on for two days and I think lavender roses for two days and then everything else that I'm picking is going to have four days. But we'll talk about that a little bit closer to February. Um, and then the last thing I worked on was the baby, oh no, that's not true. I also worked on the cat collage, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but I also worked on um, Baby Yoda, which is the present gift for my... <clears throat> nephew Logan for his birthday at the end of this month and and talking talking about having mistakes I have so many accounting mistakes in this thing um, I may have to fudge when I get to the back stitching of the face because I know it's I'm short here and I'm short there <laughs> but I think it's gonna be fine um, I'm not too concerned um, I worked on this like three days. I spun it twice and I actually worked on it one day uh, on, with one of my free whips just because I'm, I'm just concerned about getting it done. I need to get it done before the end of the month. Um, so he's really cute. I think he's going to be really adorable. And hopefully whatever little counting errors I have won't matter and my fudging will work fine. Um, there's a lot of shading in this, but the colors are very um, similar, you know, and that uh, gives it a lot of depth, but it also means that I think that um, I can fudge it without too much problems. So if I missed, if I missed a stitch and I've got a, you know, I miscounted or something, then I just use the other color and it'll all look fine in the end. Okay, so that was all my whips for this. Oops. Say, all my whips for this week. Um, so now haul and plans. Um, okay. So I got my pack of flosses for um, the um, the Heaven and Earth designs that I'm going to be. Starting, and that's not it. Oh, because I have them in the bag already. I'm going to be starting in May. Um, so I do still need to kit this up. And um, I think I might actually do a video on kitting it up. Just the method that I'm using for this particular one. Um, so 
so it's for this and I needed to order probably about half the flosses so that's what these are and they're all obviously shades of gray um, and then a little bit of shades of green that are in the eyes so I mean the greens are going to be not very much used in there um, I already had some fabric this is a 20 count easy guide um, the 20 count is not as easy to work with as the 18 count and the 25 count I don't know why it's where it's printed it just isn't as clear as the other two but I have this piece of fabric because I originally started um, the village big store on 20 count and then um, ended up going with 25 um, so I have this big piece I cut it down just a tiny bit to fit to fit this although it's still it's still pretty big I mean I left room for like a really big margin but it's still pretty big but it's nice that I already had this so um, so I have that fabric already I just got the flosses so I need to pull the rest of them out of my DMC boxes and um, kit it all up and have it ready for May which you know what that's five months away so no huge rush but I've said before I enjoy the uh, planning part of it as well so and as I said I think I'm going to uh, maybe do a video of kitting it up and like how I how I did the flosses and stuff like that um, what else is in my little haul bag um, <clears throat> I saw this pattern free pattern on Joann's so, so many of the floss tubers that I watch have started knitting as well. And um, full disclosure, I know how to knit. Um, I mean, I haven't done it in a really long time. And the best thing that I ever did, or, you know, I was really good at scarves, you know, the back and forth. And I used to really love making scarves with the eyelash yarn. Um, in fact, I have a half-finished sweater with extremely expensive yarn sitting in um, sort of a crafty basket thing. I haven't looked at it in years. I don't know, it could have like huge moth holes in it for all I know. Um, it's just moved from place to place with me, this big basket, um, like a treasure chest basket. And there's a half finished sweater in there, um, like I said, with like $300 worth of yarn. So maybe eventually I should pull that out and see if the, there's a way to finish it. I don't know. But anyway. So, um, all these people have started knitting, and I really don't have a desire to start knitting again, or regular knitting. Um, I've made, in my lifetime, two huge knitted blankets that are gorgeous. Um, I have one of them, and I gave one to my ex-husband, and when he left, he took that, which is kind of weird that he would take this, like, really nice afghan that the woman that he no longer loved made, but he took it. But, um, anyway, so, I don't have use living where I live for a bunch of scarves or hats or mittens, um, and I don't want to knit, regular knit, a huge blanket in, because seriously, that was like a three or four year project, and that was all I was doing. Um, but I saw this, and it is a no needle knit chunky blanket right so you, it's the finger knitting and I you know I thought that's kind of cool I mean obviously I know the concept of knitting is just really interlocking your loops and so it is something that you can do with your fingers and I really like this idea of the finger knitting and I've been intrigued by that and I've seen the you know that loop yarn that you can use to do no needle knitting but this is you, you don't even use loops you just use regular yarn and it's done with um, Red Heart, um, Red Heart, yeah, Red Heart, um, it's called Irresistible. So I was on Joann's and I went to go see this Red Heart yarn. Well, this Red Heart yarn is uh, normally like $15 a ball. Um, when I did like a search on Amazon and other places, it, I've seen it up to like $18 a ball. And um, you need eight balls. Well, I mean, 
fifteen dollars bottle, eight bottles. That's you know you're getting into like a hundred and was that a hundred and twenty, hundred and forty dollars, hundred twenty, yeah, or more, um, for a little blanket. That's never gonna happen. But Joann's, when I went on there, it said fifteen dollars, but then it had a little thing like two ninety nine per ball, depending on the color, and they had like ten colors in there. I didn't realize the two that I picked were actually the only two that are deliverable right now, which I don't know if it's always going to be like that and they're never going to get this back or if it is, um, it's just now. Um, but anyway, so I picked two colors and I got eight balls each. So, you know, eight balls at $3 is $24 for the blanket. It's not that much. And I was thinking, like, maybe Stacy would want to do one of them, and I could do the other one. We could do it together. Um, so that's what was my plan, and I got the yarn. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to show you these balls of yarn, right, or these skeins, packages, whatever you call it, of yarn. And I need eight of them. And I was thinking, God, you know, it must be really super expensive yarn to be $15. Okay, so I got the teal for me, and then I got this variegated purple for her, and I actually got another set of the variegated purple because I like it. So I will do it. So here is the one ball of yarn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when we're talking a chunky yarn, we're talking a chunky yarn. I mean, look how thick this is. But is that not going to be gorgeous made up into a little blanket? Um, so yeah, so I got eight of these and then eight of just oh, the plain teal. And, um, I didn't get, I got this one on Friday, but this one came while I was gone yesterday, so I couldn't bring them yesterday. Um, but next time I go over there, I'm going to bring her yarn and maybe one of mine, and we will start doing the finger knitting together. So, these, oh, look, they're bigger than my head. That would be a good picture, right? That's not what it'll ever pick. But. So when you do a finger knitting, you basically just do a slip knot and then you're just do a slip knot and then you do a chain stitch just by pulling the loop through. Like that. And then you go and you pull a loop through. So it just, it doesn't look very hard. You just need to kind of make sure that you get your, um, your loops to be somewhat even. So yeah, I'm kind of excited about doing that. It just looks like it'd be fun. Um, and something else to do. Um, okay. And then the last kind of thing that I have in haul is I got two, two pieces of fabric from Brandy Effie Stitch Me, and I ordered these partly because I wanted to kit up Cats in the Rain, and I was trying to look for something that sparked my fancy, um, and so I got these two pieces. Um, everybody knows Be Stitch Me fabric is gorgeous and wonderful. Um, I had never purchased any before. I got a piece Hanukkah, which is gorgeous, and then I went on and I ordered a couple pieces from her ready to ship. Um, I will be honest, I am not... <laughs> I am not the kind of person that wants to order something and wait eight weeks for the dyer to make it. I just am not. I want it now. If I want it and I want to buy it, I want it to be sent out the next day and get it sooner rather than later. I just, yeah, I, this is my personality. I don't want to like order something and wait eight weeks for it to come in. I don't, I, my brain doesn't work that way. Um, but I do appreciate that she has some already made and um so yeah anyway so I got a piece of 32 Camp Jobelin sea glass which is really super pretty but did not when I got it did not seem right for Cats in the Rain so it will go on something else this might actually look really good for um the Mirabilia that I got uh what is her name? Florentina? This, this could possibly work. I don't know. But, I mean, I will never hate having a gorgeous piece of fabric in my stash. 
so that was that. And then the one that actually I think will work for Cats in the Rain, this doesn't have a name, but it's a 32 count opal linen. And I know I say I don't like linen, um, but I think this one's not going to be difficult for me to stitch on because it's it's a pretty fine linen. It doesn't have a lot of weird slubs or anything like that. But it's this really pretty opaly purple. I think when I bring it up close, it's looking grayer than it is. I don't know. It's really pretty. And I think it gives me the right feels for this. So it's like the right tone as far as, you know, this, but not the oatmeal -y color that doesn't bring me joy. This color brings me joy, but I still think it will evoke the proper rain feeling. So once I got the fabric, then I was able to pull flosses. And this is just charted in um, DMC. But I was thinking about it, and really, <coughs> I love DMC, especially like for Hades and stuff like that. But if I'm going to do like a, and not that this is a small pattern, but a smaller pattern with not that many colors. Um, I have over dyes. I have a lot of gas and everything, and I, I need to use them. Um, you know, I, I think I tend to get something that I think is really pretty and hoard it because it's like, it's too good to use up. But it's like that, you know, that Irma Bombic poem about the, the rose candle that I should have melted it, or I should have, you know, lit it before it melted in the garage and I got, I had to throw it away. I mean, that's the kind of thing. It's like when I have these lovely flosses and, and fibers and, and fabrics that are beautiful, I need to use them. I don't, I need to stop thinking like, oh, I need to save that for something better or something more special. I need to use things. So I decided to kit this up with overdyes. Um, so I actually pulled like the, the DMC color so I could find something that was kind of comparable. So um, these are the colors. And the only like big changes I'm making is instead of the slicker being yellow and the umbrella being that navy, um, I decided that I'm going to do the slicker in this color. Um, and then the umbrella in this color. This is one of the colors that I got uh, for Hanukkah. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know each individual person who gave me, I, I could look it up, but I didn't, but I got that from somebody for Hanukkah and this one, I don't know, I might have as well. Um, but anyway, I thought that those colors would still, oops, would still really pop on the fabric, but would be a little bit more me than the yellow and navy. And then the other colors, which are basically all the colors for the cat cats um, I just pulled ah. I am a professional youtuber here people I just pulled uh, colors that kind of matched matched the colors that are in that were charted in DMC and I pulled an extra color for the cats um, just to add I think this solid cat this these two cats on the end are both the same color and I think I pulled another one to just add more variation like another gray in there Anyway, that's the colors that I've pulled, and this is for Cats in the Rain that I'm going to be doing in February as a sow with Amy Sprinklestein Stitches. Um, I'm going to be using the hashtag Be My Own Valentine Sow, but I think that we we need to do another sow uh, specifically for Cats in the Rain. So maybe it'll be hashtag Cats in the Rain Sow. Um, you know, let's keep it nice and simple. Um, I don't know, Amy hasn't uh, weighed in on, on uh, tagging names yet, but um, I'm sure she'll let me know if there's any any issues. Um, I'm really terrible as 
far as posting things on Instagram. <laughs> so I do these sows with the idea, sorry, with the idea of, uh, you know, doing them with other people and I love it and I love talking about it on my video and I tend to get a couple pictures in there but I'm really bad about it. So please just bear with me and my foibles here. Um, as far as that goes. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's it. That's really all I had to show you today. Pretty fabric. Um, kidding up Cats in the Rain was fun this week, and I'm looking forward to doing that. And I'm looking forward just to stitching more on my friends and family pieces. Uh, the piece I have, uh, for Stacy hasn't come up in my, in my spins at all, so I'm going to get that towards the end of the month several times, and I've only worked on the Star Trek thing once. So that still has a couple more spins to come up, and um, yeah, the chickadees has come up a couple times, and Baby Yoda actually came up two or three times this week, so, um, but anyway, I am looking forward to the week ahead. Uh, I'm glad that it's not going to be 90 degrees anymore this week. It's going down, and um, yeah, so I hope my video uploads quicker than it did last week. I'm going to... Enjoy being online with Michelle's D stash in about half an hour. <laughs> and um, I have a bunch of organizing and uh, stuff to get done today. And I've got to get all of my giveaways in their envelopes and ready to go to the post office. So that's my big job today that I've got to get done. Um, which I don't know why that's like so hard for me to get that project started, but. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and stay safe and healthy and happy doing your stitching or your knitting or your diamond painting or painting or whatever it is that you do to relax and bring out the creativity, which for me is like so, so important. And until I see you again next week, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye.